In this video, we're going to maximize 5x plus 6y, subject to these four constraints. x plus y is less than or equal to 15, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 40, x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 18, and x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to visualize it uh, by doing this graphically. Okay, so let's draw it. So let's start off with the x is greater than or equal to 2. So that's going to be a vertical line looking something like this. Okay, so I'm going to want the bit to the right of that. Uh, x plus y is less than or equal to 15, so it's going to go through 15 and 15. And it's going to be this bit that needs to be shaded. Right, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 40. Okay, so um, when y is 0, x is going to be equal to 20, so it's going to go through that point there. And when uh, x is 0, y will be 13.3 recurring, something like that. So let's, let's go somewhere there. I don't If I was on a uh, square grid, then I'd be able to be even more accurate, but let's just go with that. Okay, and I'm going to shade in region there. Okay, and x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 18. So when y is 0, x is going to be equal to 18. So it's going to go through that point there. And when um, x is 0, y will be 18 over 8. So uh, 9 quarters. Um, so about 2.25, something like that, somewhere around there, that'll do. Where's my point? There we are. Okay. So something like that. And because I'm going greatly equal to, I will need to shade that region there. So this bit is my feasible region. Okay. Right. So, um, first of all, why doesn't the simplex algorithm isn't why won't the simplex algorithm just work? Well, the reason for that is because the simplex algorithm requires the origin to be within the feasible region, which it's not. So the the simplex algorithm starts at zero zero and moves along uh, to the corners of your feasible region checking each one as it goes until you reach its maximum. So that's no good. So um, that means we can't go directly into uh, the simplex algorithm, unfortunately. Now the maximum point is going to be one of the corners. You would expect either that one or there's that one there or there's that one down there. Okay, so we need to determine a way of solving that. So how can we adapt the simplex algorithm to solve our problem? OK, well, the first thing is that uh, we're going to start it off by saying, OK, well, I know that when I maximize 5x plus 6y, I put it equal to p, and then I rearrange that to get p take away 5x, take away 6y is equal to 0. OK, so that's the first thing that I would do. The next thing is I know that with the less than or equal to's, uh, I'm going to have to add in a slack variable. So x plus y plus s1 is going to be equal to 15. And 2x plus 3y plus s2 is going to be equal to 40. So when I've got less than or equal to's, I'm going to introduce s1 and S2 in these cases as slack variables. So S1, S2 are slack variables. And they're both greater than or equal to 0. OK. Now, 
When you've got greater than or equal to, you want to make it into an equality, as we did with these ones. Um, so it stands to reason that we would then write down x plus 8y. Um, because this is greater than or equal to 18, I would need to subtract something. So I'm going to put take away s3 is equal to 18 where S3 is referred to not as a slack variable, but S3 is referred to as a surplus variable. Okay, and I would do the same with X is greater than or equal to 2. So X uh, take away S4 is going to be equal to 2. So it's the amount that I need to subtract to make it into an in into an equality, okay? So S3 and S4 are surplus variables, and we must have that S is 3 is greater than or equal to 0, and S4 is greater than or equal to 0 as well, okay? But there is a problem, okay? So there is a problem because if X is uh, 0, um, which I guess from our situation here, we can't actually have at this point when we graph it. But if x was 0, or indeed if um, uh, both x and y were 0 in either of these cases, then we have a problem because s3 would be minus 18 and s4 would be minus 2. And we must have that s3 and s4 are both greater than or equal to 0. So we can't have that happen. So how do we counteract that? Well, in order to counteract that, we must add in what we refer to as artificial variables. So we're going to introduce A1 and A2 as artificial variables. And they also have the condition that a1 and a2 will be greater than or equal to 0. So essentially, when you subtract a surplus variable, I need to add on an artificial variable to make sure that we don't get this situation of negative surplus variables. So when we take away s4, I need to add in an artificial variable. And that was equal to 2. OK, so we're almost there. Almost there. Um, these artificial variables, as the name suggests, are completely artificial. Um, they essentially, um, <laughs> they essentially kind of like mean nothing uh, to us, and we want to make sure that the artificial variables aren't given any kind of value. We want to make sure that they're equal to zero, and. What we're introducing here is we're, going, we're having to go through an initial process, an initial step, in order to then perform the next step. Okay? So this is what we refer to as two-stage simplex. The first stage is designed to minimize the artificial variables down to zero. What that does is it allows me to move from the origin into my feasible region. OK, so it jumps me into my feasible region. So this point kind of looks like 2, 2, and I believe that point is 2, 2. So we might want to keep that in mind, OK? So the first stage is minimise the artificial variables to get us into the feasible region. And then once we're in the feasible region, it's essentially translated the problem in so that then I can do simplex on what I have left. OK, so before I can start going into the uh, tableau, however, so I'm going to have to erase this now. Before I go into the tableau, um, in minimising A1 and A2, uh, I bring in a new objective function. So this is my objective function for the, uh, essentially the second stage. The first stage is I need to minimise A. And the capital A is the sum of the two 
artificial variables. Now what I do to get there, uh, because I don't want to write it in as a1 plus a2, I want to write it in terms of my other variables. Um, so you look at the two equations, well I've got two, okay, uh, you look at the equations that have the a1 and a2, and I'm going to add those two equations together. So I combine those two, I'm going to get x plus x is 2x, minus, uh, sorry, 8y, uh, I've got the minus s3, the minus s4, okay, I've got the a1 plus a2, and I've got 18 plus 2, which is 20. Okay, so the A1 plus A2 is my capital A, which I've introduced here. And so what I can do is in rearranging this, say, okay, well, if that's A, okay, so that bit's A, I can write that first line of my, um, of my simplex algorithm, or my uh, constraints here, as being a plus 2x plus 8y take away s3 take away s4 is equal to 20. I've just replaced the a1 plus a2 with capital A. And that is what I'm trying to minimise. OK, so now we can go into the tableau. So we're going to have a at the top, right? We've also got p. Then we've got x, then we've got y. We've got s1, s2, s3, s4, a1, a2, and the right-hand side. So we've got far, well, quite a lot more variables uh, to deal with than we previously had to. Right, don't want to raise anything just yet in case I forget anything. So we've got a is 1, uh, p is 0. We've got 2... 8, uh, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 20. Okay, so that is forming the top line. Okay, just need to make myself some space. Right, so let's start putting the other bits in. So 0, 1, minus 5, minus 6. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0. Then we've got this one. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 15. Then we've got 0, 0, 2, 3, uh, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 40. Then we've got this one. 0, 0, 1, 8. 0, 0, minus 1. 0, 1, 0, 18. And then I've got last one. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. 0, 1, 2. And that is my initial tableau. Now, as you can see, it is quite large. So, um, what can you kind of expect from this type of question? Now, it may well be it just, from this, set up the initial tableau. And that could be the question, OK? Now, we want to be able to see, however, what happens when we work this problem through, OK? Now, the key bit, remember, is that this is the first stage. And in the first stage, we are not maximising 5x plus 6y. We're not maximising p equals that. We're minimising a which is the a1 plus a2, OK? So rather than uh, maximising, which we are used to for all the examples that we've gone through for simplex, because we are now minimising, 
rather than looking for the most negative in the top row, we must instead look for the most positive. Because that one we will be able to uh, well essentially decrease the fastest. So that means we will choose 8 as my pivot column. Now, looking down here, what have we got? We've got um, 0 divided by minus 6, ignore that one. 15 divided by 1, it's 15. 40 divided by 3, so 40 divided by 3. It's 13.3 recurring. Uh, we've got 18 divided by 8. So 18 divided by 8 is 2.25. And then we've got 2 divided by 0, which we could ignore. So the 18 divided by 8, that is the one that we want to use. OK, so when you are picking your pivot, you are still looking at the right-hand side divided by each of those terms and picking out the smallest one, OK? So the only change here was that when you look along your top row, you're looking for the most positive. OK, so... Now we're going to have equation 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. OK, so um, equation 5 um, is going to become equation 11 down here. So I'm going to do equation 5 uh, divided by 8. So 0 divided by 8 is 0. 0 divided by 8, 1 divided by 8 is an eighth. Uh, 8 divided by 8 is 1, then we get 0, 0, minus an eighth, 0, 1 eighth, 0, and then 18 divided by 8, and that's going to get us uh, 9 quarters. Okay, so then I want to use that to eliminate the y's from the other equations. So, um, from the top row, what I'm going to need to do, the easiest way uh, would actually be, you know, visually, is to do equation 1, take away equation 5, OK? But we're meant to be using this one, so um, we're going to do equation 1, uh, take away 8 lots of equation 11. So 1 take away 8 lots of 0 is 1. 0 take away 8 lots of 0 is 0. 2 take away 8 lots of of that one. So just, you know, e probably easier just looking at this one. 2 take away 1, okay, would be 1. 8 take away 8 is 0. 0 take away 0. 0 take away 0. Minus 1 take away minus 1 is 0. Uh, minus 1 take away 0. 0 take away 1. 0 take away 0. And 20 take away 18 is 2. Okay. Right. Uh, then for equation 2, so I'm going to need to do number 2 plus 6 lots of equation 11. Okay, so 0 plus uh, 6 lots of 0. 1 plus 6 lots of 0, so 1. Uh, minus 5 plus 6 lots of 1 eighth. So minus 5 plus 6 over 8 is minus 17 quarters. Then minus 6 plus 6 lots of 1 is 0. 0 plus 6 lots of 0. 0 plus 6 lots of 0. Uh, 0 plus 6 lots of minus 1 eighth is minus 6 eighths. So minus 3 quarters. Uh, 0 plus 6 lots of 0. Uh, 0 plus 6 lots of 1 eighth. So that's 3 quarters. 0 plus 6 lots of 0, and 0 plus 6 lots of 9 quarters is 27 halves. OK. 
Right, then uh, we've got this row here. So row three, that's a straightforward one. We're going to do take away uh, row 11. So zero take away zero, zero take away zero. One take away one eighth is uh, seven eighths. Uh, one take away one is zero. One take away zero is one. Zero take away zero. Zero take away minus one eighth is one eighth. Zero take away zero. Zero take away one eighth. And zero take away zero. Zero. Fifteen take away nine quarters is fifty one quarters. And then uh, row. Four, so I need to take away three, don't I? So that's row four, take away three lots of row 11. So zero take away three lots of zero. Zero take away three lots of zero. Two take away three lots of one eighth is 13 eighths. Uh, three take away three lots of one, zero. Zero take away three lots of zero. One take away three lots of zero. Uh, zero take away three lots of minus one eighth is three eighths. Uh, zero take away three lots of zero. Zero take away three lots of one eighth. And zero take away three lots of zero. And 40 take away three lots of nine quarters is 133 quarters. Okay, and lastly, uh, we've already got zero in that row, so that can stay as is. So zero, zero, one, zero, 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 minus one, zero, one, two. Okie dokie, right. Um, so in minimizing that now, um, we've reduced A down from 20 to 2. OK, um, so what I would now need to do is that's the first iteration of the first stage. OK, so in going through that process, you can see, oh, goodness me, um, that's, that's quite exhausting just going through that one iteration. OK, so um, essentially what you should be saying is that, you know, they can't ask you uh, to do iteration after iteration after iteration of this because it just takes so much time. So um, what we really want to do is we want to reduce this down. Um, I'm going to go through one more iteration of this because, and I know that, um, I know that I'm not done because I've still got a positive in the top row, okay? Because now, rather than looking at negatives in the top row, I'm looking at positives in the top row. So I know I need to look at that one there. So I know that this is going to be my pivot column. Now I'm going to run out of space. So how am I going to do this? Um, probably best shout is I'm going to have to go back up here. Otherwise, I am going to run out of space. So, drastic times. Easier to do on a bit of paper. Okay. So we're going to have uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, so um, this is going to be my pivot column. I now need to uh, calculate my pivot. So uh, we're going to have 27 halves divided by negative, so ignore that one. We've got 51 quarters divided by 7 eighths. We've got 133 over 4 divided by 13 eighths. We've got 9 quarters divided by 1 eighth, and we've got 2 divided by 1. Okay, so 51 quarters divided by 7 eighths is 102 over 7, which is 14.5, etc. Okay, well that's definitely not being picked. 
We've got the 133 over 4 divided by 13 over 8, which is 266 over uh, 13, which is 20.4 something something. Not interested in that one. And then we've got 9 quarters, and we're going to divide that by 1 eighth, which is 18. So we work with the smallest, which is this one. So that's nice, OK? That's nice and convenient. OK. So that means that row 12 is going to become row 18. So this is nice and easy. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. OK, this is going to be a bit difficult now because I'm going working back upwards. Um, right, so I want to eliminate this one. So I'm going to do uh, equation 7, take away my new equation 18. So we've got 1, take away 0, 0, take away 0, 1, take away 1, uh, 0, take away 0, 0, take away 0, 0 take away 0, 0 take away 0, minus 1 take away minus 1 is 0, minus 1 take away 0 is minus 1, 0 take away 1 is minus 1, 2 take away 2 is 0. And this is what you want to get to, because we've now you can see that a is going to be equal to 0. I've reduced it down to 0. It's gone. Excellent. OK, now I need to get the other bits, though. So this one, uh, row 14, is going to become row 8 plus 17 quarters of uh, row 18. Right, OK, so we've got 0 plus 17 quarters of 0. Um, 1 plus 17 quarters of 0. Minus 17 quarters plus 17 quarters of 1, 0. 0 plus 17 quarters of 0, 0 plus 17 quarters of 0. 0 plus 17 quarters of 0, minus 3 quarters plus 17 quarters of 0. 0 plus 17 quarters of minus 1 is minus 17 quarters. 3 quarters plus 17 quarters of 0 is 3 quarters. 0 plus 17 quarters of 1 is 17 quarters. And 27 halves, so 27 halves plus 17 quarters of 2 is 22. OK. Right, so then um, we need row 15. Uh, which for, is going to be row 9, and I've got 7 eighths, so take away 7 eighths of row 18. So, um, that, take away 7 eighths of that, 0. 0 take away 0. 7 eighths take away 7 eighths of 1 is 0. Uh, 0 take away 17 eighths is 0. 1 take away 7 eighths of 0 is 1. That'd be 0. 1 eighth take away 70, 7 eighths of 0 is 1 eighth. Uh, 0 take away 7 eighths of minus 1 is 7 eighths. Minus an eighth there. Uh, minus 7 eighths there. And then we've got 51 quarters take away 7 eighths times 2, which is 11. Right, row 16 is going to be row 10. Take away 13 eighths of row 18. OK, so 0 take away 0. Just need to make sure I leave myself enough room. Uh, 0. Right, 13 eighths take away 13 eighths of 1 is 0. 0 take away 0, 0, 1. Um, three eighths there. Zero take away thirteen eighths of minus one, so positive thirteen eighths. Uh, minus three eighths take away thirteen eighths. Zero is minus three eighths. Uh, zero take away thirteen eighths of one. 
and 133 over 4, take away 13 eighths of 2 is 30. OK, and now uh, we've got row 11, take away 1 eighth of row 18. Um, OK, so 0, 0, 1 eighth take away an eighth of 1, uh, 1 there, 0, 0, minus 1 eighth take away an eighth of 0. That will be uh, plus an eighth. That will be one eighth. Uh, that will be minus an eighth. And then nine quarters uh, take away one eighth times two is going to be two. Right. OK. Now. First things first, after we kind of like get through the exhaustion, right? First things first, um, there are no more positives in the top row apart from that one. So that means that we have minimised A. A has been reduced down to zero. A is basic, A is equal to zero at this stage. We have P as basic. P is currently at 22. X is basic and is at 2. Y is basic and is at 2. Remember, that first point we reach in the feasible region was the coordinates 2, 2, which is directly what you've got here. So the whole process of going through the two stages, sorry, the two iterations that we've done of the first stage has got us from 0, 0 to 2-2. Two, two. That's how far we've moved. OK? So we've got to the first corner. Uh, the S1 is equal to 11. The S2 is equal to uh, 30. The S3 and S4 are non-basic. They're both 0. The A1 and A2 are both non-basic. They're equal to 0. And capital A, remember, was A1 plus A2, so it's definitely 0. So this is definitely the end of the first stage. Now, what happens next? Well, the thing is, we have got to the first point in the feasible region that we can work with, 2, 2. But P has not been maximised, because that's what the original problem asked us to do. So what do you do now? Well, once you have reduced A down to zero, our tableau can lose some rows and columns. We no longer need that column. We no longer need this row because that was the A row, and that was the A column. They've gone. We no longer need the artificial variables. They are gone. And so what happens is that we reduce the table down to this. So the tableau now has P, X, Y, S1, S2, S3, S4, and the right-hand side. We have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 3 quarters, minus 17 quarters, 22. We have 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1 eighth, 7 eighths, 11. We have 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, sorry, that's 1. No, zero. I'm pointing at zero. It's zero. And then we got one, uh, three eighths, 13 eighths, and 30. 
we have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus an eighth, 1 eighth, 2, and we've got 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 2. Okay, this is my reduced initial tableau for the second stage. So now I go into the simplex algorithm and perform the second stage, going through the first iteration up until I know that there are no longer any negatives in the top row. So I would now be looking for the most negative in the top row, which is this one here, in order to choose my next pivot. And so it goes then through the uh, simplex algorithm um, as you would normally do it. So this is what the two-stage simplex algorithm is all about. Um, again, the question is, you know, how much could you be asked to do in the exam? You would certainly not be asked as much as I have done uh, because of just the sheer amount of uh, calculations that you've got to do. You're there for a long, long time. Um, so focus in on knowing what the two-stage simplex algorithm is all about and what happens in it and also making sure that you can go from the constraints, the inequalities, to be able to set up the two-stage. Okay, so knowing what's going to happen and how do you get from the, second, the first stage to the second stage, these are the important bits that you need to know how to do in case you're asked to do one particular part of it.